You may know what a CTF is already, but do you know what kind of skills you need? Skills pertaining to the computer, even physical security. In this episode, episode two, we talk about what skills are needed to be compete and be at least competitive for CTFs. Let's get started. Hi everyone, my name is Grant Collins. This is episode 204, where we address the whole topic and the concept behind Capture the Flag. Capture the Flag is an organized event or game uh, used to sharpen your skills, learn, train, and use hands-on experience for different tools and different collaboration efforts with teams. Now you may be thinking, that's all great, but what kind of skills do you need in order to really be good at a CTF? outline in episode one, CTFs pose challenges for students and professionals like ourselves. Uh, different challenges ranging from programming to forensics to anything of that type. So having a, a, a knowledge of various topics and types of attacks, vulnerabilities, things of that, uh, there's a bunch of skills, what I'm trying to say here. There's a bunch of skills that are required to be good for a CTF and to be really competitive in one. For CTFs, here are some of the skills that you will need to have developed. Programming, knowledge behind cryptography, familiarity in exploitation techniques, Linux distributions, an idea of forensics, and knowledge of the reverse engineering process. Let's break these down further. For programming, you need to have an understanding behind how to read syntax, understanding the logic behind a program, and attempt to reverse engineer certain techniques. If you are wondering if you should learn programming for cybersecurity, what resources to use, and what languages to learn, I recommend that you check out my three-part episode series, uh, link in the cards or in the description below. For cryptography, you need to have an understanding behind the fundamentals behind cryptography. You will have to decipher strings of text and also understand how to encrypt and decrypt specific messages. So you're really going to need to be good at programming too for cryptography, as, as alarming as that may sound. So programming is definitely an emphasis and something that I emphasize students start learning right now. There are several different types of exploitation techniques, including binary, web-based, network, and software. Each type of exploitation can be seen and utilized around uh, each CTF regardless, so Jeopardy style or attack defense CTFs. So having knowledge behind all of these different types of exploitations is very important. Let's go ahead and address just a few examples of what each uh, exploitation is so you just have a working understanding and a knowledge of what it is. So let's go ahead and start with the binary exploitation. So binary exploitations are commonly uh, used through the attack method of memory corruptions. And a memory corruption is a common binary exploitation technique, which can enable an attacker to gain unauthorized privileges to a system and inject their very own scripts. For web-based exploitations, we have tons of attacks that we can use. Here are just three examples. We have buffer overflow. Uh, while a program is writing data to a buffer, that buffers boundaries overran and overwrites into the memory. We have SQL injections. SQL statements are inserted into an entry field of execution in a database, also known as like a database dump or data dump. Cross-site scripting. Malicious scripts are injected into trusted web applications. And to give you an example of some tools, we have Nmap, Wireshark, and Metasploit. And these are a few common exploitation uh, tools worked for web front, web-based vulnerabilities and attacks. We have network exploitations. Uh, a great example would be a denial of service attack, also known as a DDoS attack, which attempts to overload a resource with hundreds of, of botnets or hosts. We have worms, which are self-propagating malware, which exploit system vulnerabilities and spread across the local network. We have ARP spoofing, which is a type of attack which sends falsified ARP messages over the local area network. And to conclude, we have software type exploitations. The one that I could come up with really quickly was keyloggers. Keyloggers are software or hardware programs which track the activities of a keyboard. 
The next one is Linux distributions. You need to have a working knowledge behind Linux. As Linux, uh, it comes in various variations of, of operating systems. We're looking to hone in our uh, attention to penetration testing uh, like operating systems. These three systems include Kali Linux, Black Arch Linux, and Arch Linux. I recommend starting with Kali Linux, and if you want to advance onto more particular systems, you can always go into different Linux distributions, which offered even more complex uh, penetration testing tools. But honestly, Linux, Kali Linux is really the way to go. So forensics, for this skill, you will need to have an understanding behind how information is stored, how to look for certain files or information hidden with other file types. An example of this, a really basic example, could be a picture, right, with a hidden text file within, embedded within the picture. And then you're gonna have to be the one who looks for that text file within the picture. And then we have to have knowledge behind reverse engineering. For reverse engineering, you need to have a working understanding behind what the process is, how it works, how to conduct reverse engineering in the best ways possible. We'll need to utilize reverse engineering for all five of the skills above. Uh, I think a lot of people look at reverse engineering as not just it's, it's itself a process, but you have to reverse engineer programs, things of that nature. So making sure that you have uh, a knowledge of what reverse engineering is and the process is very important. So these are the most common types of skills that you need to have in order to be successful, competitive in a game of CTF. In the next episode, episode three, I address the platforms that I recommend students use as a starting and a stepping stone to developing these skills. So tune in to episode three for more information on that.